double, double toil and trouble. Today we're making three Halloween recipes made in the air fryer. We've got the spider pretzel bowl, the bloody witch fingers, and the spooky ghost puffs. Make sure to hit the subscribe button to become part of the Quisori community and hit the bell icon to see more recipe videos like this in the future. Awesome, we've got everything measured out and ready to go to build these amazing spider pretzel bowls. So Marge, if you can help me. Yes, We're actually going to start this part, it's optional, but if you would like to dye your bread a more spider-esque color, I recommend using gel food coloring so you're not adding any extra liquid into your bread dough. Mm -hmm. And I would say the easiest way to do it is what we're about to show you. I would take a generous amount. You don't need a lot. This is probably a fourth teaspoon or maybe half a teaspoon. And we're gonna dissolve it into the warm water. Mm -hmm. So we're using a mixture of black food coloring, black food gel coloring, and brown food gel coloring. And so we can dissolve that in there. And that looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I mix brown and black together is because sometimes black food coloring turns kind of purple. And if you want a purple spider, go for it. It's gonna look really good too. But just so we have a more spooky looking spider today, we're gonna go with just the brown and the black. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to add in the three ounces of melted unsalted butter. And then the sugar, two tablespoons of brown sugar mm -hmm. and two and a quarter teaspoon of active dry yeast. We're gonna let this sit here for five minutes until it foams up mm -hmm. and it activates all the yeast so we can develop the gluten. And so while that's going, we're just gonna add two teaspoons of kosher salt to four and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And just stir it so it's evenly distributed, help the machine out a little bit. We're gonna be putting this into a stand mixer because we don't wanna like knead the dough for 10 minutes. That's a lot of, unless- You don't wanna be here all day. Yeah, that, or if you want a good arm workout, then I suggest kneading some dough. We're gonna be using the dough hook today and it's really mm -hmm. important to start your mixers off slow and low so when you turn it on, it won't just like erupt in your face. Yes. Yeah. We're um, gonna just get this attached and then we're going to do some movie magic while we wait for that to bloom. Awesome, so the dough just finished and what we did was just added the yeast mixture to the four and a half cups of all-purpose flour and two teaspoons of kosher salt into the stand mixer. Then you're gonna let it um, mix together and combine together until it becomes smooth and elastic for about 10 minutes on low speed. I would start it off at speed two and then increase to speed four. Mm -hmm. And that way it won't spray your <laughs> all-purpose flour everywhere and it will be really nice. So we'll just remove it right now. You can totally use the same bowl to let the dough proof in. So Marge is just gonna mm -hmm. get that going. So yeah, take this out for a sec. Yeah, and you can tell the dough is done by how it feels. It feels like really nice and smooth and elastic. All right, cool. So we're just gonna pop that in there and then you cover it with plastic wrap or another cover that you have, and it rises for about one hour, mm -hmm. I would say, depending on the temperature of your kitchen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna set that aside, and we've already got a batch proofed for you, and we're ready to shape and divide the dough into our spider. Yes. So your dough amount is going to about double the size, mm -hmm. and look at this creepy color. It's gonna be Looks really great. nice. Mm -hmm. Now we're just gonna flip it out onto a clean, flat surface. And what we're gonna do is take a bench scrape or a bench cutter and cut it directly in half. We're gonna save this half for the head and the body. And then we're gonna divide this into eight equal sections. And these will form your little legs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, the dough is so soft. We're using Margaret's pretzel dough recipe today. So it's really yeah, yummy. Yeah, these make a really awesome just pretzel recipe in general if you didn't want to shape it into a spider. 
here. They're very delicious. Okay, so we've got the eight legs for yes. our arachnid friend over here. Mm -hmm. Then with this piece, you wanna kind of do it like not directly in half because the head is smaller than the body. Mm -hmm. So this, and then if you wanna help me form this into a ball for yeah. the body and I'll do the head. Easiest way is you can shape it with your hands like this and to get that perfect circle, put it against a flat surface and just press down and roll. Yeah. And you can do it with two hands or one, whatever is easier depending on the size of your ball of dough. Mm -hmm. And then we're just gonna set it off to the side. Then we're going to boil it in um, boiling water with a fourth cup of baking soda. So it just sets the shape and like allows mm -hmm. it to kind of like a wet proofing stage. And then we're gonna bake it. And the way you get your legs to be curled, that's the cool part. We have these aluminum foil rods that we made. You're just going to spray them with some cooking oil and then wrap the legs around them, secure them in place with the ends of the foil rods. And it'll help you create these little curly cues for the legs. Yeah, make sure to spray them too. Otherwise, you risk them sticking to the foil. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, don't forget to do that part. Yeah. So if awesome. you could pass me that and then I'll spray the, the rods really quick. Mm -hmm. And you want to make sure you get them fully coated on all sides. So after you spray it on one side, just flip them and get the other side. And you'll be boiling the legs in the water and baking soda directly with the foil as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you pretty much just kind of like wrap it around the foil. Mm -hmm. And since the foil rods are a little bit longer, you can fold them over to keep the legs in place so they don't fall when you put them into the water. Awesome, we've got all of the legs, the head and the body boiled. We're just going to make a really quick egg wash. It's just one egg beaten. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna brush them all over the legs, the head and the body, sprinkle with some flaky salt and put it into the air fryer. Yeah, do you wanna do uh, the body first? Yeah, let's do the body first. Okay. So we've preheated the air fryer to 380 degrees Fahrenheit. Then you're just going to open it, give it a little spray of cooking oil. And we're going to pop it in there. It's gonna be at 380 degrees Fahrenheit for 12 minutes for the body. Nice. And we top it with some flaky, flaky salt, salt as yeah. well. Do you put the head in as well with no, the body? No, I do it separately okay. just because it gives it a better color. And it's really fast. It's gonna be 12 minutes for the body, eight minutes for the head. And for the legs, they're six minutes and you can do it two batches, four legs fit in each basket. Awesome. Yeah. Soon we will have our spider. Yes, it's gonna be looking real cool. Awesome, look, we've got a little spider friend coming mm -hmm. out and it's just really nice. We got, we've got, we gone ahead and peeled a clove of garlic and sliced it in half for the yes. fangs. We have and olives. We've, mm -hmm. And we're gonna be using pimento stuffed olives for the eyes mm -hmm. and be filling it with some warmed up marinara sauce. And we've also gone ahead and removed those foil rods. So look, you've got perfect little curly cues for the legs. And what we're gonna do now, we're just, we're going to cut out the center of the bread bowl. Yeah. Yeah. Yum. Yeah, and if you don't have marinara sauce, you can fill it with any other dip. That would be like equally delicious paired with pretzels. Yeah. Yum, and nice. that perfect gray color from the food gel dye. And it looks perfectly cooked. Mm -hmm. This might be a little steamy, so be careful, but we're just going to hollow out the inside really quick. Okay, I like this direction. It's a little bit more oblong-y, more like a body. Yeah. So we're going to attach it this way. And then there's a trick to elevate the head. We're just going to cut off the excess like bread on the inside. Ooh, it's nice and hot, yum. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna stick it under right here and place the bread head on top. Perfect. Then we can angle the fangs so they're like little sharp. Yeah, things. I like that. Yeah. Well, if it doesn't stay, that's okay. You can like put it under. Mm -hmm. And then now we're just going, oh, we'll fix that. Don't worry. You wanna try? Yeah. Cool, it's yummy. <laughs> mm. Super fluffy. Yeah, it's good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. So now we're going to put the spider legs 
arrange them. Yeah. I suggest putting the legs underneath the body cavity so mm -hmm. that it just sits on top and you're ready to go for your presentation. Yes. Mm -hmm. or... Awesome. And we can get, squish them in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it just kind of sits on top. Yeah, nice. That looks really good. Yes. Marge, would you do the honors of filling in the body? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, and the bread will begin to soak up the marinara sauce, so you can refill it a couple of times before you bring it out to your guests if you are waiting and um, waiting for them and they haven't shown up yet. That's okay. It'll just give the bread extra flavor. It'll be really nice and supple. So we've got the fangs put on mm -hmm. with the garlic clove. And for the eyes, all we did was slice the pimento stuffed olives in half. And Marge and I are gonna quickly arrange that right now and show you what they look like once it's all assembled. Yes, for the eyes. Yeah, okay, we just gone ahead and used some wooden skewers or you can use toothpicks. And actually, I would take that off and then put this first and then skewer it. Mm -hmm. So I would put the skewer on first into the bread into the bread, and then you, with the pointy end sticking out, and then you just stick the olives on. Like that. Yeah. Super. You guys ready for the grand reveal? Yes. We have a surprise for you too, though. This little baby has a brother named Tim, and I'd like you to introduce you to Tina. And we've got some passion fruit eggs, mm -hmm. which kind of makes it look like they're eggs, but it's kind of fun and spooky too. Yeah, because it's like, all webby on the inside from the cavity of the passion fruit. Mm -hmm. So we get extra creative with these. These are so fun. Yay, we got little spider friends. These would be a hit at any Halloween party mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. And the way to eat them, you just take a leg and dip it in and there you go. Yeah, so next we will move on to the bloody witch finger cookies. Yes. <laughs> All right, we are on to the Bloody Witch Finger Cookies. They are so fun and really easy to make. So in this stand mixer bowl, I have one 16 ounce package of the store-bought sugar cookie dough. Super easy. So we're gonna add um, one cup of all-purpose flour and we add the flour because it helps um, the cookies stay intact and not spread too much when they bake. And I also took five Oreo cookies or you know chocolate sandwich cookies and I just pulsed them in a food processor until they were fine crumbs. So that just gets dumped in. And I also have three teaspoons of water and that goes in. And now we're just gonna mix it on medium low speed until everything is combined and then our dough is ready. Okay, the dough looks awesome. Everything is combined, so now we get to roll it out. Um, so we take about maybe like a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half worth of dough, and you just kind of like roll it in your fingers, maybe about five inches long, a quarter inch thick, but you kind of just will like gauge on like, look at your finger and try and go for the size and thickness of your own finger. Oh yeah, these are getting creepy already. Yeah, and you just kind of roll it out, you know, pretty thin because they will um, puff up and expand a little bit in the air fryer, so keep that in mind. But you pretty much just want to roll them out. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. The spider kind of scared you there. <laughs> And then um, with a little paring knife, you know how our finger and knuckle has some like indents in it? So I'm just gonna make some cuts with a little paring knife. Oh, cute. Just like that. Wow, they're and so creepy. I have a plate here with like some parchment paper so that they don't stick and we can roll them all out. Um, and then I have here some sliced almonds um, as the fingernail. And we have some raspberry jam that we're going to dip them in once they're finished um, baking to make it look like, you know, it's a bloody finger. But also to hold the nail um, with the cookie dough, I'm gonna take just like a little dab of raspberry jam and add it to the dough so that the sliced almond will stick. Genius. On the nail. Super fun. So yeah, me and I are just gonna continue to roll all the 
cookies out. That one looks really good. <laughs> and then we get to air fry them. Okay, so we got the air fryer already preheated to 320 degrees, so now it's time to pop them in. Awesome. So you just kind of want to carefully place them in. Um, you don't want them to stick to each other. So these air fry at 320 for seven minutes, and then they're all done. So nice and easy. Yeah, this is a super easy recipe. Awesome. Okay, the last batch of the cookies are done, so let's check them out. Ooh, they're so spooky. They're very creepy looking. Yeah. Which I love. Should I start taking them out? Yeah, okay. yeah, let's take them out. And then um, we already started dipping the ends of some of the cookies in some raspberry preserves that I just um, gently warmed through. And then we just kind of like dip them in, just like that. Oh yeah, get the bloody stumps down there. Yeah, and then Mia put some extra <laughs> in a bowl and it just looks even more creepy and festive. E.T. <laughs> <laughs> I love how easy this recipe mm -hmm. is. It takes like no time to make and they come out Ugh. looking amazing. It looks so great. Yes. Wow. And they're really, really delicious. They're they like are. cookies and cream flavored cookies. It's so good. Now it's time to make our spooky ghost puffs. We're gonna start off at the stove here. We're gonna turn this on and bring the heat down to medium low. Then we're going to start by adding in Two, two and a half ounces. Two, two and a half ounces of butter. Yeah. And then we're going to add in two and a half ounces of water, two and a half ounces of whole milk. And we're going to add in eight teaspoon of kosher salt. Mix, give that a quick mix and allow the butter to fully melt before you add in the flour. too hot because you are going to be essentially making a roux. Um, Padishu is like cooked batter and then later we're going to bring it off the heat back towards the table so we can temper in the eggs in the stand mixer while it mixes on the uh, paddle adjustment so it gets extra air in and cools down the batter as well. And it's just going to be really glossy and really beautiful. I'll be able to pipe it and get it into the air fryer and you'll have mini cream puffs. Yeah. So the butter is almost melted now. Once everything is fully melted and incorporated, we're going to slowly add in the flour. You're going to want to vigorously whisk, or not whisk, just mix together. And once the entire batter starts pulling aside from the pot, it's going to turn nice and glossy. That's when you know it's done. Then we're going to take it off the heat and add in the eggs one at a time. It's going to be about 150 grams of eggs. Perfect. So it looks like the butter is finally finished melting. And remember to adjust your heat back down. We're going to go back to medium low. And we're going to add in 76 grams of bread flour all at once. And we're just going to vigorously stir, 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 stir. Perfect. So it's already cooking to the heat. Nice. So it's already starting to pull away from the pot. We're gonna give it a little bit more time to let the gluten develop a little bit. Perfect. And now I'm gonna turn the heat off and we're gonna bring it over to the table and start adding in the eggs. Perfect, so now that we've gotten the dough off the heat, Marge, will you help me mm -hmm. add in the eggs? 
Yes. We have 150 grams of eggs and it turned out to be about three medium sized eggs. Mm -hmm. We've gone ahead and whisked that already. You're gonna wanna add this in increments of three. So we're just gonna do a third at a time. Do you want to add them in now or in the sand mixer? I believe now. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna get it all incorporated here first, then we're gonna put it into the stand mixer. Oops. <laughs> a little bit escaped there. Now, after you've added in all your eggs, you're gonna transfer it directly into the stand mixer. Perfect. It's nice and totally combined. It's very smooth. Mm -hmm. And now we're gonna let the paddle do the rest of the work for us. And it's gonna just allow the batter to cool down and become extra glossy. We're gonna wanna mix this at about medium speed for about five to eight minutes. And it's gonna be really springy and glossy and bouncy. Perfect, so now that your batter has done mixing, it's very like smooth and elastic and it stays like this so when it pipes, it won't fall. We're just gonna pipe it, I mean, we're gonna fill the piping bag now with the batter and when we're going to be piping them out onto pre-cut parchment paper squares and we're gonna be putting it into the air fryer. And we already got the air fryer preheated mm -hmm. to 350. Yeah. So we're gonna fill this as much as we can and then we're gonna cut a tip at the bottom. Feel free to use a piping tip if you desire. If not, you could just totally cut the bag itself and then pipe out um, I believe it's like two to three inch circles. That's how big we're making these puffs. Mm -hmm. And you should be able to get about eight or nine puffs from this recipe. Mm -hmm. Out of the container that we have and we'll scrape in the last of it. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm give this a quick shake here. Take it all the way down. Cool. Get this out of the way. Perfect. And this little bit right here that's gonna be perfect to help you easily squeeze out the dough. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I'll hold the parchment paper down. Thank you. So we're gonna clean off that edge right now. And just whip it like that. Get the other ones going. Awesome. I got a little bit on you there. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Nice. And now these are gonna puff up really nicely. Be your little awesome. spooky ghost puffs. Okay. And again, we've already preheated. You're gonna be using 350 degrees Fahrenheit today. Now the trick with cream puffs is you don't want to open the oven early or the air fryer basket early. You're just gonna have to trust it, trust the process, keep everything closed until the end and then open. If you open halfway through, the puffs will collapse because it needs the steam from the heat of the oven to puff up. Mm -hmm. yeah. No peeking. No peeking. I believe it was for what? 12, like 12 minutes. minutes? Yeah. 350. Perfect. I'm just gonna lower the time down to 12 minutes, and here we go. Awesome. <laughs> and our spooky ghost pups are done. Let's see how they look. Wow. Oh. Yes. Nice. They puffed up beautifully. And if you're scared of reaching in because it is hot, you can always detach the inner basket. Yes. These are beautiful, you guys. Look. Okay. Ooh, nice, and they remove really easily from the parchment paper. Mm -hmm. Look at that, they puffed up so nicely. Mm -hmm. Awesome. They look beautiful. Now we get to show you how to make the filling mm -hmm. and we'll get that going. Yeah, so these are gonna cool completely before you fill them. Mm -hmm. That way the filling won't melt. But yeah, we'll get ready on the filling next. Perfect, we're gonna make that delicious raspberry mascarpone filling right now. Mm -hmm. Say hello to Glinda, everyone. <laughs> She's the good witch, but you know, in cow form. Yeah. So it's one cup of yes. heavy cream in Glinda. <laughs> Thank you, Glinda. She says you're welcome. <laughs> you can't hear her. All right, then we're gonna add in two tablespoons of powdered sugar. Mm -hmm. And then a teaspoon of vanilla extract. 
You're gonna wanna switch over to the whisk attachment now for your KitchenAid or your stand mixer. And remember, don't let it whip too much because you don't want butter, you want whipped cream. Yeah, so until about like medium soft peaks ish. Mm -hmm. Now that we've whipped the cream, we're gonna fold in the mascarpone. Mm -hmm. We've already whipped the mascarpone earlier, so we do suggest whipping your mascarpone so it's lighter and fluffier, easier to incorporate into your whipped cream and that yes. way it won't fall either, the whipped cream. Perfect, we're gonna just get that all here. Mm -hmm. And we also have a third of a cup of raspberry preserves yes. that we're Let's also gonna fold there. in. Yum. It's gonna add lots of yummy flavor mm -hmm. and color. Yes. It'll kind of look like the ghost puffs are like oozing blood out. Yeah, or brains. <laughs> or brains. <laughs> it's gonna be real spooky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, it smells so good. Yum. Smells so good. Put in there. Oh, will you hold it, March? Yeah, thank you. Perfect. And if you can't fit all of it in, you can always refill the bag. I think this is good for now. You can, once again, you can totally do this with a piping tip, or you could do what we did. Uh, we didn't want the cream puffs to get soggy or collapse, so we pre-sliced the bottom to let out the extra steam. Yes. And this way, if you are making your cream puffs a day in advance, it's a great way to do so as well. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to take this little guy and get some filling in there. It might get messy, but it's okay. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, there we go. Good. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, nice, and they're puffing up real good. Perfect. <laughs> oh, that looks good. It could be a little tongue sticking out, it's great. <laughs> and then we're gonna glaze these. So we made a white chocolate ganache. Super easy to make. You take half cup of heavy cream, you put it in a little small saucepan, and then you put it over like medium low heat until it's just simmering. You don't want it to come to a boil. And then you pour it over one and a half cups of white chocolate chips and then you let it sit and you whisk it until it's smooth. And then you get this perfectly smooth, glossy white chocolate ganache. Perfect for dipping and coating the ghost puffs in. And then if you have eyes, like candy eyes, you could decorate the ghost puffs in, or you could take um, some extra raspberry preserves and dot, um, some on the ghost puffs for eyes. Yeah, or if you have any leftover of that gel food coloring, that'd be a great way to get some eyes on there also. Mm -hmm. You don't have to use black with food coloring, that way you could pick whatever color you want. It'll be really nice. I think I missed this one. Yep, that's the last one. Get a little bit more filling in Yeah, there. so look how cute it looks. Yeah. And it's pretty runny right now, but when they set, they're gonna look really great. Wow, everything looks great. We've just yes. finished the spooky ghost puffs. As you can mm. see, the glaze is still setting, but it looks awesome. And we yeah. used some of the raspberry preserves for the eyes and some black food coloring. Uh, but you can also use like store-bought eyeballs. Those would be great for the spooky ghost puffs. Yeah. And then we have Tim and Tina and our bloody witch fingers and all ready to go. And now we just have to do a grand tasting for you and to get this spooky night started. Yes. Oh my gosh, everything looks so good. Everything yes. smells delicious. I don't even know where to start. Maybe. I think we should start with the spider. Yeah, I agree. Pretzel dip bowl. I agree. You go for Tina, I go for Tim. Okay. All right. Yum. Oh, they're still soft, nice. I know. Mm. Some bloody marinara sauce on there. Woohoo. Mm. Mm hmm It's mm. good. They're nice and springy. Mm -hmm. Still really soft. Chewy, really delicious. That's all you want in a good pretzel. Mm -hmm. It's so got good. the nice balance of salt, 
Those are delicious. So good. Yeah. Are we gonna go for the bloody witch finger? I think it's time. Okay. okay. Yes. <laughs> Cheers. Mmm. <laughs> really good. I love the like cookies and cream taste flavor. And the raspberry jam is really good. Yeah. It, it balances everything well and it's really good mm -hmm. as a nice Halloween candy cookie. Oh my gosh, if you dip this into like hot chocolate or put it on an ice cream sundae, that would be really so good. good. Mm -hmm. That would be very, really good. Okay. okay, let's try one of these spooky ghost puffs. Oh yes. Should we split one? Yeah. Sounds good. This one's got three eyes. <laughs> For we can our, kind of like yeah. open it up and see. Ooh, pretty. That's a really nice color. Look, yeah. look how pretty that looks inside. Yum. And then, ooh, the nice, the white chocolate has set pretty well. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Do you eat the eyeballs? I think we can. They're just mm -hmm. candy. Mmm. Really good. The filling flavor of the raspberry is really delicious. I love that mascarpone. It's very light and refreshing. Mm -hmm. It's it not too sweet mm -hmm. either. The acid from the raspberries get really getting through. Mm -hmm. And like the pate is like cooked really nicely. It's still fluffy and it's not chewy, but it's like mm -hmm. got a bite to it. Yeah. Yeah. Super yeah. good. <laughs> it is so delicious. <laughs> I hope you guys give all of these recipes a try and let us know what's your favorite Halloween candy. So let us know in the comments below. Yeah. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you in the next one. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Bye.